In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps CDS option sets. We're going to talk about what they are, why you might want to use them, and then we're going to talk about some of the nuances of there's a better way to create them, make sure that you don't set yourself up for failure, and then a little bit about filtering and patching on them because it's kind of tricky, and I just want to make sure you guys have a firm understanding of incorporating these into your apps. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today's show, we're going to dive into Power Apps CDS option sets. So part of the common data service is you get these option sets, which if you're like a SharePoint person, just think of them as choice fields, right? So you can set some values, and then those are the only valid values for that column. And so what I want to do is walk you through setting up your first one of those, because when you create it, there's actually a little trick you can do when you create it that's going to make your life so much easier later. So we're going to cover that. And then once we get them over into our app, I want to just talk to you a little bit about how to filter off of them, how to patch to them. It's not hard per se, but it's not what you think. So I want to kind of just give you this video to jumpstart you and make it a little easier for you to use these uh, fun little features of Power Apps. All right, easy enough. So let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here on my desktop, let's go over to you know data and then entities. And so in the very first intro video I made for you guys, I went ahead and made one called Chewy Tracker. And so we'll start working on, you know, adding data to this over time as we do these videos. Also, it's worth me mentioning that now I have added a playlist for Common Data Services videos just to make it a little easier to start to group these. You know, it's only like three or four we've got now, but over time I can see us having, you know, 10 or 20 of those pretty quickly. So I wanted to make sure we had one place. So there's an option set, uh, or not an option set, a CDS, a playlist over there. Anyway, so let's go on Chewy Tracker. And so then once it loads, you're like, whoa, well, that data, what, did, what is all that? Remember, one of the easiest things you can do over here is if you just change your view to custom, then you don't see all the back end columns. You just see the columns that we've created. One was called the dog's activity, things like napping, sleeping, eating, and then how much time does Chewy spend doing those. So what I thought we would do here is I want to add an option set now to color code his mood. You know, maybe we'll just do some type of, you know, color coding because I find that uh, I like colors for these types of demos. So, so we'll say add a field um, and we will just call this uh, color of his mood. What a weird name I realize, but whatever, you get the idea. And so then for the data type here, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way down here and we're going to look at option sets. So right here, we're going to click on option set. And so when you do this, it is going to walk you through provisioning option sets. Now, if you look over on the left real quick, you might notice that option sets are kind of a standalone thing inside of the common data service. So you can reuse them across different entities. You know, they're, they're not like SharePoint where it's just tied to the field you do it with, which is so I guess it makes it more like a SharePoint managed metadata column where you kind of have that data set that moves around. I guess that's, I never thought of that. But that's how I would equate it now that I think about it. I, I learned during the video, who knew? Anyway. <laughs> Um, so when you do this, it's like, all right, what option set do you want? And so you could choose one of those existing option sets or what's most likely is you're going to say, I want to do a new option set. Okay. So we're going to do a new option set. This is where me and the powers to be disagree. Notice that the display name of this option set is exactly the same as our column. This can be really, really jarring for you when we go start doing some of the other stuff you do. So what I'm begging you to do right this moment is by color of his mood options. Just add something that distinguishes this because over in our Canvas apps, it's really hard to tell what's the option set and what's the, um, the column, which is probably what I wasted hours of my life dealing with. When I started creating them with this, this will save you, okay? So now we just need some colors. So for our colors here, we'll just do, you know, a little red, add another one, we'll do green, and then blue, and of course we gotta do Power Apps purple, right? And so we'll just do purple. Okay, so that gives us some option sets, yay! So now we hit save, right? Color of his mood options, that's the name of his option set, that's important, and so about after 10 seconds, that's saved, and so now you can see it's using the options, or it's using a data type of option set, and the option set is color of his mood options. You could edit it, we don't need to bother with that. We're not gonna mess with default value or required, you can, that's not gonna change any things we're about to show. So we're good, so we're gonna say done. And so then remember, you know, you also have to save your entity. So after you add a new column or field, or whatever you wanna call it, 
I guess field is a more correct word, Shane. Once you add that, you have to save uh, your entity. And so now you have to save the column, you have to save the entity, but now it's available. And so now that that's available, let's switch over to the quick little app that I built to kind of go show you some of this. So right here in this app, now in my app, you know, because the data source was added and then we add the options, it's not here. And so what you have to remember to do, and you've done this with all your other data sources, but I clicked my little data sources here and then Chewy trackers and then refresh, that's gonna pull in our column and the option set. So then now over here in our gallery, I should just be able to add a field. So we'll throw a label in here, we'll kind of pull this down here. And so right now we're gonna say, hey, I want you to be this item. And then we're going to look for color, color of his mood. And so then it should start filling in the data type. So obviously we don't have any data, let's get some data. To do that, I've got a form over here, and if I hit edit, I don't have a field for it, so we need to add a field real quick. So how do you do that? You guys know this. Click on edit fields, add a field, and so then color of his mood, add. And so then now that should pull in, right? Edit options, set single select, I like it. And if we hit the drop down, we're like, oh yeah, uh, when Chewie is walking, he is usually pretty red because he's mad, he does not like to go for walks. And so we'll say save. And so then there you go, it's went in there, you know, uh, when he's eating, you know, maybe we'll edit this one real quick. And so when we're, he's editing, or eating, he's green. And then we know the happiest color ever is purple and then that pink makes Chewy pretty happy. So let's click on that. And then we'll just set that to purple, right? Okay, I wanted to kind of have some data. So save. Okay, so we've worked with an option set to a form pretty easy. Um, you know, if you're curious of how that works, what they're doing, is they are doing choices, right? So the choices function goes and looks at our option set or in a SharePoint context, it looks at all the uh, available uh, values for that column and it says color of his mood options, right? And this is where it's real nice that we name that option set options because it makes sense, right? So color of his mood options, it's getting the choices out of there. That's how it knows to do this. So then now let's go over here. Now, what if we wanted to set it up so you could filter this data by that option set. So first thing I tried is this. I said, hey, let's filter Chewy trackers. And then we said, oh, color of his mood is equal to red. I gotta type in red in quotes though. And it, it fails, right? Womp womp. Incompatible types. This can drive you crazy, right? But I know it's red. I just saw it's red. So what you have to do, turns out it's not hard, but it's kind of like hidden. We're going to start to type color of his mood again. This is where it's important that you've got color of his mood options because you're going to see color of his mood in this list and color of um, uh, color of his mood options. So they could both be here with the same exact name. You're like, which one's which? I don't know. But now we see this. So you do color of his mode options. You get the blue line well, because it doesn't understand what you're trying to do. Do a dot on the end. Oh, look at that dot. And I think red is down here at the bottom. Perfect. And so then now we can close that out and we should be able to say, there you go, color of his moods is red. And if we changed it to uh, purple, right, we should get napping back. And we click on that, there you go. So that is, that's the trick, right? You can't type color of his mood equals the text, even though it is text, you've got to go and get it from the option set. So that was one of the big first lessons for me. Let's make this thing a little more dynamic. Let's have a drop down up here where we have the ability to do that. So then maybe what we're going to do is we're going to say an input and then a drop down. We'll pull this right here. I had not planned on doing this demo, but we're going to do it anyway. So we know we would use that choices. And then we're, we don't want the choices from Chewy Tracker though, right? We want color of his mood option. Oh, color of his mood options. Once again, why we named it something specific, easier to find. I'm also going to set my drop down to be, um, oh, sorry, allow empty selections. We'll set that to true. It's a neat new feature that they rolled out a little bit ago without any fanfare, very sad. And so then now what are we gonna do? Color of his mood equals, and then we're going to say, uh, what's the name of our drop down? Probably drop down one if I had to guess. Yep, drop down one, I'm so smart. So drop down one dot selected. And so we close or dot selected and then dot value. And so then if we close that out, 
do we get to see our things? Oh, look at that. There's red. And we'll just make sure if we go to green was eating. Perfect. And then now you're probably thinking, well, what if I want to show all of them? You know, then what I might do here is, you know, just end up with some type of if, right? So if is blank. Right, we like we like bonus learning in these little videos, don't we? I think I hope you do, because I enjoy teaching bonus things. So if that is blank, then we're going to do uh, we just want to do Chewy trackers. And if not, then we do the filtered value. So then that shows us green. But if we switch it back, we click on green, which makes it blank. We see all. So other ways we've done that in the past is we've turned this into a collection and then um, you know made that work, but you know, it's just an easy way to be like, oh, there you go, some dynamic filtering. Yay, pretty fun. Okay, so that um, is the first half of it, right? How to filter off these things. And that would be the same if you were trying to do um, lookups. You know, if you're going to do a lookup where find the first item where the value is red, right? Then we would just do the same type of um, syntax. So that's going to be kind of important to us. If we use, you know, Chewy Tracker options dot red instead of the word red. So the other thing we might want to do is we might want to patch those. So if we do a patch, so I'm going to throw a button here. You guys want to see a neat little trick I added as well? We're just going to call this button patch. So obviously, you know, I'm using components to pull in and quickly make these apps, you know, have a little bit of flair, a little color, so they're not as ugly. And so I was getting annoyed, like those buttons come in as blue. What I remembered is I could just go here now, I can just go to fill, and instead of having to remember our crazy purple uh, color code, I'm just using header one and then dot uh, header fill color because my header is set to that. And so I get my purple. So just another little benefit that I hadn't even thought of for how I'm getting um, components to, you know, make my life a little easier. Eh, whatever. Anyway, bonus learning number two. Okay. So if we're going to patch this thing, so what would we do here? Well, it's not, uh, not hard at all, but we'll just cover it real quick. So we'll say patch. Chewy trackers, we're going to just choose the uh, selected record out of the gallery so we know which one we're patching. And then what do we want to update? We're going to set the favorite color. Nope, it's not favorite color. It is uh, color of his mood. And then we're just going to set that to be red, right? Because it's always the first thing we try. And so then you can see once again that this is mad. Fair enough. So then what you were going to do is you're just going to change this out to be um, color of his mood options. That's why we named him that. I know I keep saying it, but I just can't tell you guys how much that has made my life easier. And we'll set it to blue. And so then now if we click on a record over here, we'll click on the eating record and then we'll say patch and then it should change to blue. Boom. So nothing too complicated. It's weird. It shows blue here, but then when you click on it, right, it expands out, shows you the whole formula. So, so that's, that's really the core of this thing, right? Is it's just a matter of understanding that by naming it something that made sense, by adding the word options to it, you made your life so much better. Um, also, another thing I'll throw out there real quick is one, this might be sacrilegious, but I honestly don't use option sets very much. Um, the reason for that is, you know, because they're all about controlling what values go in here. But if I'm using uh, CDS as a data source and not really a CDS as the full powers what it is, which is a lot of this is where we're at in our journey, right? Is it's just, it's no different than a SharePoint list. It's just somewhere to throw data for a Canvas app. Then those cases, it's a lot easier just to not, to avoid option sets altogether, just use a text column and then control the options that you'd make available via dropdowns over your Canvas app. Now that's not, where we want to get to, right? In the grand scheme of things, one day we're going to graduate to common data services, kind of our be all end all data source. And so if we wanted the data source to have set values, because people might be using it via Canvas apps, they might be using it via model driven apps, they might be using it via Excel, via an API. If we wanted to have those values available no matter how you used it, that's where option sets really show some power. But for a lot of us, that's not where we're at on our common data service journey today. So that's why I'm not uh, harping on it. And for a lot of the apps we build for customers, we are not building them. We're not using option sets. We're just using text and then handling all the options by a drop down inside of Power Apps. So that's one. Um, another one, we won't go down this rabbit hole, but if you're building CDS for um, offline apps and you want to incorporate uh, option sets, 
you have to collect all the options ahead of time, right? So if you, I promise we're not gonna get down this route all very far, but I'll just show you this. Just remember you can do something like this. You can say clear collect, uh, col uh, options, colors. And then we would do uh, choices, and then it would be our color, um, color of his mood options. And so that right there, that would be what you would want to do, right? So you can collect your option set into a collection, and then once it's into that collection, then you would use that in your offline app. So it works, it's fine, but we're not here to like get that deep into the, the puzzle, but I wanna throw that out there if you guys are thinking about CDS for, um, offline apps and just worth noting because the other thing I guess to keep in mind is that now that I have this option set right so boop let's just do that so we could come over here and remember for our items you know so now instead of this you could just use your options colors and it should show up and behave just the way it did before oh we don't have a green we have a purple there you go so so it all works the same way, but now instead of going and fetching that from CDS every time, you're just pulling it out of an option set or uh, out of a collection. And then what's kind of fun is you can be like, oh, well, look, it has some weird values in here and it doesn't even let me do things. So I don't know. Whoops. I was almost done putting this uh, video out. I just finished like, the first half of the edits. I just realized I was one other thing I wanted to show you guys. Oh, well, good news. I can add it. So the last thing you might be asking yourself is, hey, what if the options for my option set change? How do I go and do that? Great question. That's what I was asking myself. So what you can do back over here in your Power Apps portal, right? So back on Make, if you go over here under Data, you can see there's option sets. And so then after the list of these load, I would probably just filter down, okay, show my custom ones. We know me. Oh, look at that. Color of his mood is the first one. That was an accident, but cool. So we click on that. And so then here are all the different option sets. And so then we could add a new item. And so we could add yellow. And then we could say save. And so then now over in our app, what we need to do, right, we need to go over there and refresh it, but we should be able to get that to come through. So, okay, there you go, our save's done. So we go back over to our app, right, and then get it to show up. We would refresh Chewy trackers. And then now that we've done that, we should be able to press the button. And then in our drop down, we should have yellow. Whoa, it worked the way we expected. All right, anyway, quick little edit. I just want to throw this in here because I thought this might be something you want to know. So, all right, back to whatever I already recorded. All right, I think that's everything I've got. Remember, if you are a uh, subscriber over on training.powerapps911.com, then you have the ability to download this app. Um, I'm going to try and package this up so the whole thing goes over. We'll see how well that goes or not. But... Um, other things I've got, like leave me comments, you know, what are you guys thinking about? What are other CDS, like easy mechanical stuff like this that you would like to see me cover? Cause I want to make sure that we're doing it. I know next to my list in my head is to talk a little bit more about lookups, relationships, that type of stuff. But what other of these CDS topics would help with you? Leave me comments. I respond to all of them. Sometimes it takes me a few days, but you know, whatever. All right. I think with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you want to work together, need some help getting your Power Apps going, hit me up at Power Apps 911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is, check out the Power Apps playlist over here and you know, enjoy that. All right, thanks and have a great day.